Today on Israeli Salad, we'll meet two interesting people who live real close to the holy city of Hebron, meet a Zionist group of American students, and of course speak with Rabbi Samson. So don't go anywhere. We'll be starting in 22 seconds. Shalom to all our viewers. First, let's meet Baruch Nachshon, who I visited in Kiryat Arba. Baruch Nachshon lives in Kiryat Arba, the suburb of the holy city of Hebron. Nachshon is considered one of the most important contemporary artists in Israel, and he received the Distinguished Artists Award from the Bar Ilan University in 1989. I visited Baruch Nachshon's studio, which is only a few minutes walk away from the cave of Machpelah, tomb of the patriarchs. The first thing I noticed when I entered the Nachshon family's apartment was that there is a lot of color in Baruch Nachshon's artworks that can be seen on almost every wall in the house. The world is very gray and I have to bring some life and colors to the world. So show us these pieces. Well, what do we got here? This is uh, Yerushalayim. It's like scroll and the same is another scroll with the uh, tomb of Rachel and another scroll uh, with uh, the tomb of uh, the patriarchs in Hebron. And here you see the scroll is coming to the reality. Everything of the scroll is coming to the reality. It's part of past and the present altogether. I concentrate within myself and I have the idea to make this idea. You see the image without face but a lighty face with uh, wings thinking in meditation, uh, sitting. So this is how you see a spiritual person, an angel. That's, this is how you uh, picture them? See, David Amelech, King David said in uh, the Psalms of David, that God make his angels, winds, and fire, and everything in the creation, it is angel of Hashem. So there is not any special image. So I made all kind of uh, images. Sometimes fire, sometimes wind. Mashiach, in the times of the last days, you see Mashiach with the lion and the deer all together. It's a symbol of the peace. Now I see um, in, in some of your art, uh, artworks, you uh, include the Lubavitcher Rebbe, uh, the, the Rabbi of Chabad. I received a scholarship from the Lubavitcher Rebbe, and 15 years later I arrived again to the state and the rabbi told me to, sh to make a special show for him and for the public and he walked in the exhibition about 50 minutes, gave his remarks and blessed me to spread all my artwork all over the, the world. Here I, I put him, I made it maybe 15 years ago and uh, I put him in a shell because I wanted him to be revealed to be Mashiach. So what's the meaning so of this shell? The shell, it's something that covered you. Here you see I put the image of the Rebbe in the lane of Hebron, old city, and dancing Hasidim. This I made after his passed away. Love to the image, to his spirit, and his behavior, that it was very, very human. Here I want to show the, the way of the survivors from the diaspora coming to the, from the west to the east to Earth Israel. And I gave him a shape of a fish because a Jewish people symbolized by fish. Music and Bet Amikdash on the top, you see. I use a lot of number seven in my pictures here. You can count the wings, seven wings, to the special uh, music sign. Why seven? Because uh, seven, it means completeness. Here I want to show the harmony of the nature, that all the creatures are praising God. Last week we spoke about, on our program, we spoke about Birkat Kohanim, the blessing okay. of the uh, Kohanim. I see you have a uh, piece about that too. I have about, about everything. This is a benediction prayer. The story of the Megillah Esther. Here you see 
King Ahasuerus with the wine in his hand. And here you see Mordechai and Haman. He reminds me of someone. I, I don't want to say anything. I don't want to involve in politics. Okay. This is to a point of view of looking. This is a point of view of our people from our world. And this is a looking of Hashem from his skies toward our small uh, star. And here is written MS. In truth. Truth from both sides, from the uh, right direction or the opposite direction, MS. Any way you look at it, it's true. Any way, yes. This is unity. Tell me, when did, when did you start um, uh, painting? When did you start working Childhood. on Childhood. From childhood? Yes. And Baruch Hashem, I'm independent. I have a special pipe from the heaven coming to my mind, and this is what I'm doing. This is gathering of uh, all kinds of animals, making gathering and session on the Manhattan uh, Big Garden, Central Park Garden. It seems to me that sometimes you um, draw it uh, with a message, but sometimes just for fun, right? Instead of uh, answering you in words, I show you this image. Very interesting. What is this? Don't ask me because I don't have answers. Thank you very much. You too. It's a pleasure. Before we continue, I'd like to correct something I said last week. On our last program, we saw pictures from the Ramchal Synagogue in Akko. I mentioned that Akko is an Arab city, and of course, that's not accurate. The Ramchal Synagogue is located in the Arab section of the city of Akko. Okay, before we meet another resident of Kiryat Arba, let's meet the participants of the student leadership mission organized by the ZOA, the Zionist Organization of America. 20 students from a variety of universities and colleges in the U.S. joined this mission. The program of the mission is very unique, first and foremost from the geographical point of view. Shlomo Blas spoke to some of the participants about their experiences and goals on this mission in Israel. The ZOA student leadership mission, the purpose was twofold. One was really campus activism, to expose Jewish college students who were already active on their campuses, many of them with the ZOA, to an intense seminar um, of activism. What were the highlights of the trip uh, in your eyes? Um, I've been on a lot of Israel programs and this is the first time we went to uh, the, uh, the areas in Judea and Samaria. Hebron, East Jerusalem, uh, just seeing things like this that most Americans don't get to see. We saw the people that live there, we saw how they developed um, into the communities that they are today. Some of the highlights were meeting with some uh, ministers and former ministers in the Israeli government, like Natan Sharansky, and hearing their experiences and their plans for the future. Definitely the highlight would have been the people that we met. They were just so warm and open and welcoming and loving, and in every way just beautiful people. Do you feel this uh, visit changed your perspective on what's uh, going on in Israel? Um, it kind of, it didn't exactly change it, it kind of reinstilled it and, and um, just made me know that like I'm fighting for the right cause at home. It just did solidify my beliefs in thinking and believing that all of Israel belongs to the Jews. Yeah, I mean, I was I never really had a uh, a uh, an opinion on you know the settlement building issue. I'd always think oh these settlements are they're the obstacles to peace and like if people were just so stupid, one of they're so selfish, just move out of the settlements. We don't have to worry about anything. It's all going to be peace. And then I actually went to the settlements and I was like, these aren't settlements. These are towns. These are cities. These are people. And that kind of destroyed everything for me and sort of just rebuilt it over the trip. I always imagine people living in like huts, essentially. And we went to visit them and they have beautiful houses, beautiful homes, beautiful families. Each student participant who came on this program is going back to their campus with this training that they received over the past two weeks. 
when you tell them you've been to these places and you've gone through this, there's nothing that anyone can say to detract against Israel because they've never been, they don't know. I just want a lot of people to realize the truth that Israel's a normal place where normal people live their lives and we need to remember that and it's really a place of vibrancy. That Israel is part of you even if you don't live here. If you're a Jew, you're a part of Israel. That Israel is an oasis of democracy in an Arab desert of tyranny and oppression and if this beacon of democracy in this part of the world is destroyed then what can come next is can only be left for the worst imagination. Do you feel it is uh, possible to, to change uh, people's perspectives or is it just uh, you just have to be there to see it? I think it's possible and I think one of the main priorities would be to make Jews first identify and, and make Jews be part of their culture and, and uh, the national identity. There are obviously ways to make a difference. I mean, you're facing this wall, so you can make a dent, you can make a crack in the wall. But you can't, I don't think you can split the wall asunder, but you can make a crack. I mean, I suppose my big difference will be hopefully moving here. Is there a chance we'll see you here as more than a visitor? Absolutely. Um, personally, I would love to live here, and hopefully that'll happen sometime soon. That is more than a hope. Uh, I'll be back soon. Uh, I hope so. I hope so. Please, God. I plan on coming, maybe next semester. And now, the Jewish music singer Sinai Tor, who lives a few blocks away from Baruch Nachshon in Kiryat Arba. <laughs> Sinai Tor is part of what is known as the new generation of Jewish music singers. He is a rock musician with a modern style and fashion. After a short conversation with Sinai, I understood that he has a very spiritual way of looking at things. Sinai Tor is not here. It's just a hoax. There is only God here, alone. You must not be misled by the puppet called Sinai Tor. Sinai Tor is just another way that God, the King, speaks in this world. So there's no reason to talk about Sinai Tor. Want to talk about the king? Now that's something else. Hashem is present here in everything you do, in every situation. Like many of the New Age Jewish musicians, Sinai feels himself influenced by two people. They are the righteous. Rabbi Shlomo Kalibach and Rabbi Nachman of Breslov. Rabbi Shlomo taught us to always look deep don't look into the eyes of good and bad. Look through the eyes of the tree of life. Look for God, Hashem, in everything you see and do. Look for the depth and the meaning in everything. Rabbi Nachman told us to talk to Hashem. Always talk to Hashem. That's the most important thing. That was a brief look at this singer. We'll be back with one of Sinai's songs right after our weekly insight. You are watching Israel National News TV. Every Friday evening, Jews gather in synagogues to begin the Shabbat by reciting the Kabbalat Shabbat. Kabbalat Shabbat, the welcoming of the Shabbat, is recited by the congregants in order to greet the holy day of Shabbat. I'm joined now by Rabbi David Sampson from Jerusalem. So, Rabbi Sampson, where does the Kabbalat Shabbat come from? It's interesting. Uh, the Kabbalat Shabbat prayers are the most recently added prayer to our prayer book, to the Siddur. And it's interesting that the other prayers are initiated during the Gaonic period. And it's something which is uh, 1,500 years old. These prayers are 450 years old dating back to the Kabbalists of Tzfat. It does say in the Talmud that there is a custom to greet the Shabbat and to go out and to meet the Shabbat. Well, it was the custom of the Kabbalists in Tzfat during the, before Shabbat and during this prayer, they would actually leave the synagogue and greet the Shabbat outside of the synagogue, go towards the uh, uh, towards uh, the setting sun and uh, greet the Shabbat as it's coming in. Today, uh, we don't leave the synagogue, but we still commemorate this by turning around during part of the Kabbalat Shabbat prayer. 
Kabbalat Shabbat is said even before the sun sets, and it seems that it's recited before Friday ends and Shabbat begins. Why is that? Well, it's interesting. Uh, there is a, a law that Shabbat extends its boundaries in both directions, before the Shabbat and after Shabbat. After Shabbat, we not only have Havdalah separating the Shabbat from the days of the week, but we also have another meal, which is called a Malava Malka, escorting the queen as she leaves, and we have a meal after the Shabbat is over. Similarly, we don't have a meal beforehand, but we do have a prayer that uh, inaugurates the Shabbat, and we have it specifically before the Shabbat begins to show that we are going and greeting the Shabbat. We are eager to see the Shabbat, and uh, the idea behind the entire prayer is to praise the Shabbat. The core of the entire uh, prayer is the one psalm that was actually written by first man. And it's uh, one of the first things that was written by mankind. Mizmar Shir, the Yom HaShabbat, it was written the eve of the first Shabbat, after first man was uh, exited from the Garden of Eden. And he uh, was in... Uh, very difficult situation. He experienced the, the beginnings of the first Shabbat and he wrote a psalm for the Shabbat. And this is the psalm that we recite every Shabbat since then to inaugurate the Shabbat like he did. Thank you very much, Rabbi Samson. The Weekly Insight is brought to you in cooperation with Machon Meir, the largest Zionist institute in Israel, bringing people closer to Judaism. If you by any chance did not watch Thursday's Israel and NTV News Edition, I just wanted to inform you that the News Edition includes a special interview with Rabbi Yonah Metzger, the Ashkenazic Chief Rabbi of Israel. Okay, now let's go back to Sinai Torah with one of his songs. The words of the song we will hear now are taken from a Shabbat morning prayer. And if our mouths were as full of song as the sea, and our tongue as full of joy song as its multitude of waves, we still could not thank you sufficiently, Hashem our God, and God of our forefathers, and bless your name, our King, for even one of the thousand thousands of thousand, a measurable multitude of favors, miracles, and wonders that you perform for our ancestors and for us. Shabbat Shalom and Shavua Tov to all our viewers. Enjoy the music, and be sure to join us again next week for another edition of Israeli Salad.
הראשון שאנחנו עומדים באמת לפניך בתור. לא משנה מה נעשה בעולם, וגם נהיה צדיקים גמורים, לא יהיה מאוד באמת לפניך. ואני אראה בכל אותך, עדיין לא מספיק. כל המילים, לא מספיק להודות לך, אפילו על טיפה טיפה בתוך הים הגדול של האהבה והחסד. לשמך הגדול 